Hi, I'm Monica Humple. I'm a master certified coach, and this is uh, one video among many that I'm doing for those of you who are actually the unfaithful spouse. My hope in this videos is that you will find some clarity and understanding as to what your betrayed spouse is going through. This particular video, we're going to focus on boundaries. I know that um, most likely your spouse has especially if they've gone to counseling, has started to um, lay down boundaries for themselves. And I know they can sometimes feel very controlling. I struggled with this as a betrayed spouse myself in that I realized I really had zero boundaries <laughs> before the affair. Matter of fact, I was very codependent. There were a lot of things going on, but through therapy, I realized I needed boundaries. So let me help you understand a little bit about what a boundary is. Boundaries really don't have anything to do with another person. They're more about the person making the boundary. I'll give you a non-affair recovery example. Um, I have a friend and this friend is constantly asking me to watch after her child for her. And over time, I begin to feel uncomfortable and resentful because my time and the things that are important to me are getting shoved to the back burner because I keep watching her child for her and I'm not saying no. So a boundary in that case would sound something like this. The priorities in my life, my family, my time, my job, my household, whatever it is, those things come before watching my neighbor's child because those are the things that are important to me. That is my priority right now. So I'm going to set a boundary that says other things will not take priority over these things that I have deemed are important to me, these things that I value. So I'm going to set this boundary, which means I will probably end up saying no to my friend when she asks me. Now, you know, boundaries the person who is experiencing a boundary person may not take kindly to that. That may feel uncomfortable to them and they may feel hurt or insulted or upset that this person that was so freely willing to do anything asked before is now saying no. So there, you know, there could be a struggle with my friend. Do you see what I'm saying? But the boundary that I set really doesn't have anything to do with my friend. It has more to do with protecting those things that I value, those things that are important to me. Okay, let's go to an affair recovery example. In affair recovery, there are some standard boundaries that are recommended that those of us who've been betrayed set for ourselves. And we're setting these boundaries not to control our spouse, but because we feel incredibly unsafe choosing to stay in a relationship with a person who betrayed us. So to stay in that relationship with the person who betrayed us, <laughs> we want to feel safe. So we start setting boundaries to say, for me to remain in relationship with a person I cannot trust, I need to have these boundaries in place. These boundaries may sound something like this. For me to stay in a relationship with you after you have betrayed me, I need to know that you are not hiding things from me. I need to know that you are being transparent with me. Therefore, part of that, I need to know that you're willing to allow me to see your phone, to have access to your devices, to know that you are genuinely working on yourself and working on our marriage. Um, it could also sound like, uh, for, you know, transparency purposes, I need to know where that you are, where you say you are. I would like us to turn on, um, you know, location services on our phone or use life 360 or whatever. It could also sound like this for me to feel safe working on this relationship with you. I need to know that that other, the affair partner is no longer in the picture. Therefore, um, I need to have assurances from you that you are not in contact. And this goes back to access to devices and things of that nature. And if the affair partner contacts you, that you'll tell me. So these boundaries are not about controlling another person. They're about making it clear to the other person, the person that we don't trust anymore, that for us to feel safe enough to stick around, these are the things that we need. 
Now, this isn't controlling, and here's why. You have choices. We all have choices. We don't have to honor people's boundaries. But if we value the relationship with the other person, honoring those boundaries is part of valuing the relationship. Honoring those boundaries is part of being in a relationship. Matter of fact, you need boundaries too. We all need boundaries. Boundaries are healthy. They're about deeming what's important to us and protecting those things. It is important to us. Basic human safety is a need we all have. It is a primal need, if you will. So when we don't feel safe in relationship with another person due to betrayal, these are things we put into place so that we can start to feel safe. Now, you can honor that boundary or you don't have to. Just understand that when we set boundaries, any human sets a boundary, there is always a consequence attached to it. If this, if this boundary is not met, I have next steps in place as to what I will need to do if this boundary is not honored. You know, if my friend continued to treat me poorly or um, take advantage of me or would not accept my no for an answer, that relationship may not continue. If, if this boundary is protecting what's most important to me, I am not going to sacrifice that for the sake of this person who is choosing not to respect my boundaries. Now, in a marriage, we set boundaries as betrayed spouses because we want to feel safe. We are genuinely trying to move past the affair and heal ourselves and heal the marriage. And we know full well we cannot heal. We cannot heal if the affair partner is still in the picture. We cannot heal if our spouse is still being secretive and evasive and not answering our questions and keeping things from us. We Healing is important to us and we value that and we need that and we need this safety. So we set boundaries. Now I want to tell you, I understand. I really do. I understand that setting these boundaries feels controlling to you. Matter of fact, you may feel like a child whose parent is laying a boundary down. I understand. I really, really do. I understand how that can make you feel. But because you feel that way, doesn't mean that's what's happening. No one has the power to control you. Case in point, you had an affair. Your betrayed spouse is very aware they have zero control over your actions. But they're asking for respect for their boundaries so that they can heal. That's what's happening here. I will say one more thing before I wrap up this video. I am very aware that some people do confuse boundaries and control. Um, that is unhealthy. I will completely agree with you on that. If your spouse is doing that, that is totally and completely unhealthy. But boundaries are not about control. Matter of fact, boundaries are not even about the other person as much as it is about the person making the boundary. If you guys are seeing a couples counselor, maybe that might be a great place to have this conversation and to determine are the boundaries being set reasonable? Are the boundaries being set truly about the person setting them and not about controlling the spouse? Have that conversation, be honest about it. And what boundaries do you need to set for yourself so that you can heal so that you can get on a healthy side of this as well, okay? It's about being reasonable and being um, very intentional about what you're protecting of you, right? That's what your spouse is doing. That's what I did. Betrayed spouses need space to heal. Feeling unsafe doesn't allow us to do that. So our boundaries are there to protect us. And we do hope and pray that our spouse understands that enough to respect our boundaries and honor them because they value the relationship just as much as we do.